Good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you've all had a wonderful day so far. Um, I'm Shalima Nair, and I also work in the epigenetics research group. So today I'm going to talk to you about investing in advanced sequencing technology to solve the epigenetic puzzle. But before that, I just want to summarize what you have all heard today. We heard about what epigenetics is, how it is different from genetics. We heard about how the two meter long DNA is coiled and sits inside the tiny cell and the gene to gene interactions. We heard about the inheritance of epigenetic modifications across generations, the interaction between epigenetics, environment, and metabolic disorders. Then after, then you all had a lovely morning break. And then <laughs> Chen spoke to you about the role of epigenetics in aging and cancer, followed by Ruth, who spoke to you about epigenetic diagnostics in prostate cancer. And finally, Claire highlighted about the various epigenetic therapies in cancer treatment that, are, that have been approved and that are in phase, phase one and phase two clinical trials. So I'm going to talk to you about the main technology that is behind solving these epigenetic puzzles. When you all came into Garvin, you must have noticed this beautiful spiral staircase. And this actually represents our DNA, which is the core genetic material. So every single cell in our body has got 23 pairs of chromosomes. And each of these chromosomes is made of many, many genes. And each of these genes has got the DNA, which is mainly comprised of these four chemical letters, adenine, thiamine, cytosine, and guanine. And they are called as nucleotides. And in every single cell in our body, there are three billion nucleotides in pairs. Just to give you an idea of how big this number is, if you imagine each of these nucleotides to be the size of a button, and if you're going to stick it all together in a long chain, it's going to be so big that it can actually cover the circumference of the Earth two times. And to give you an idea of how many number of cells are there in the human body, if you imagine just your hand and every single cell in your, body, in your hand to be the size of a grain of sand, your hand is going to look as big as a bus. So the task that is before us is enormous. In order to understand disease, we need to understand the healthy human genome first. And we need to know the exact order of these chemical letters in order to get the complete picture of the human genome. And for this purpose, in 1990, a group of international scientists came together and started the Human Genome Project, the main aim of which was to create the genetic blueprint of the human body. It took them 11 long years to complete and $3 billion. And today, technology has advanced so much that we have got these new sophisticated sequencing machines which can sequence 16 human genomes in just about three days at a cost of $1,800 per genome. So we have, we have come a long way. And this can not only give you the genetic sequence, we have now devised methods to be able to read the epigenetic sequence as well. And how we use this technology to solve the various epigenetic puzzles that you heard today from my colleagues. So I'm going to take you through the sequencing process just to give you an idea of what this involves. If I take, for example, one project in our lab is to identify a unique epigenetic signature in the breast cancer patient, which could be used for diagnosis or prognosis. So what we would do is we would take, the, uh, take extract tumor tissue from the cancer patient, and it's not enough if we do it just on one patient. We will have to do it on many, many patients. And for comparison, we will need to do it, sorry, I think, yeah. And for comparison, we will need to do the same thing to extract normal tissue from healthy individuals as well. And then what we would do is extract the DNA. Remember, the DNA is all coiled, and the technology isn't as advanced that it can read the three billion letters in one go. So what we would do is we would chop the DNA into smaller fragments. And, when, and further to this, we would subject it to a standard process, which can give the genetic sequence. 
However, in our case, we need the epigenetic sequence. So what we would do is subject it to a special epigenetic process, which can give you the epigenetic sequence, followed by a process called library preparation. It involves a lot of steps. I'm not going to go into the details, but this is to tell you that it, there are a lot of steps in this process. And this is to prepare the fragmented DNA in such a way that it can be read by the sequencer. And again, inside the sequencing machine, there's a lot of things happening. And finally, what we get is huge amounts of data, which needs to be analyzed. And when I say huge amount of data, for 16 human genomes, it's about two terabytes of data. Um, and it's like you storing 400,000 songs in your iPod. So that big data is what comes out of this, and we need very sophisticated, powerful machines to handle this data, and highly skilled data analysts who can actually process and map this data to the reference human genome. And after this, we also need to interpret and visualize this data. So again, when I talk about data, it's about millions of data points. So on a clear night sky, you would see about 10,000 stars. But what I'm talking here is in orders of magnitude compared to the night sky. And we should be able to interpret this data and visualize it. And we have got um, many tools to visualize this data. And at every single point, there are checkpoints where we have to check the quality. And if it's not good, we go back and repeat the whole process again. So, so we already have the sophisticated machines in Garvin. We have got highly skilled researchers. And we have got powerful machines to handle this data and data analysts. However, this whole process takes time and money. So just what I'm showing you here is just one sample. But as you know, for projects, it's doing a lot of samples. So for the DNA extraction, it takes about two days and $10 per sample for the Library preparation, it takes about a week. For the sequencing, it takes three days. For data analysis and interpretation, it takes about 10 days. And when we scale this up, for example, for the 1,000 genome project, which is happening in Garvan, which is to sequence 1,000 healthy human genomes so we can create a reference database for future studies on various diseases, the analysis price is 45000 and the data storage cost is 18000 per year. And remember, this is just one project, and there are many, many projects happening across Garvin in, in various labs. So how does these results from sequencing look like? So this is just an example that I've shown here, which you have already seen from Ruth's slides. And what I show here is the methylation levels between the cancer and the normal sample. The normal is in blue, which is much lower, and the cancer is in red, which is much higher, which means the methylation levels are higher in the cancer sample. So remember, Amanda spoke to you about the DNA being all coiled together inside the cell, and it is a three-dimensional structure. So we are also now able to visualize such complex interactions using this advanced technology where we can see how the DNA sits coiled together and what are the genes interacting with each other. So what I have put up there is a normal and a cancer uh, patient. Um, and in the normal, if you see those blue loops, those represent the gene-to-gene -gene interactions. And in the cancer, the brown loops represent the gene-to-gene -gene interaction, which is much higher in number than the normal. So this wouldn't be possible without this um, advanced technology. So I would like to summarize saying that advanced sequencing technology has thus increased the pace of medical research. And if you think about it, it took 10 years or 11 years for the first human genome to be generated. And today, we can do 20 times more than that in a much shorter time frame. And so we believe that this technology has the potential to reveal the mysteries in epigenetics and thus solve the epigenetic puzzle. Thank you.